Kim enjoys last supper before really crazy diet in pursuit of rock hard body. Kim Kardashian started a new exercise routine along with a really crazy diet in a bit to get a rock hard body on Sunday's episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians. The 37 year old mother of two took decisive action after admitting to her horror at seeing unflattering photos of her in a bikini on the beach. While most of the rest of her family traveled to Cleveland to meet the family of close and star boyfriend Tristan Thompson, Kim was instead in New York to start working with the bodybuilder she follows on Instagram. Kim, who also had a heart to heart with Scott Disick over his wild behavior in Cannes, admitted to mom Chris Jenner that she was planning to start a really crazy diet. She then told her that Melissa Alcantara's Instagram photos showing her amazing transformation from her weight gain after having children to her live bodybuilder's physique were super inspiring to me. I really want to meet up with her and see if she can train me. She can help direct my food and help really get me on an amazing path, she told her mom. If I was 10% like her it would be life-changing. I've got to have this lifestyle. I've got to try, Kim declared. Chloe also managed to make it to the initial meeting with Melissa who joked that I may kill you with her intense workouts. Kim insisted she was super motivated and super wanting to go fully but not before the sisters both said they needed a last supper, with Chloe saying we've got to have a slice of pizza to say goodbye. It's our goodbye day. Okay, said Melissa who looked clearly dubious about their commitment. The sisters were shown joining family friend and self-confessed food fanatic Jonathan Keeban as they went to two pizza restaurants and then got ice cream cones with sprinkles. It's going to be really hard, my new lifestyle, Kim admitted. Jonathan teased her about her strict new diet. I've heard about lifestyle changes before. I'll see you at Sippy and is, he joked of the upscale New York restaurants. She can't resist that pasta. But Kim insisted she would be committed and dedicated and was then shown being put through a grueling workout with weights by Melissa who proved to be a stern task master. Kim told her new trainer, who like her wore tight workout pants and a crop top, I know I could get abs, I've never been pushed to get them, but I know I could. Melissa also shocked the reality star by going through her home pantry and insisting she throw out most of the food she seemed to most favor, insisting she needed to instead stick to fresh, natural foods. But Kim said one of her biggest challenges was hanging out with Jonathan who is such a big foodie he was seen getting food god tattooed onto his forearm. He even repeatedly called her trying to interrupt her workout with Melissa to instead get her to join him at a restaurant, with Kim admitting, I've been ditching him because Melissa has me on a crazy strict diet. I have to just avoid him. It's not like he wants to come chill, he just wants to go eat, Kim said. Jonathan seemed to delight in testing Kim. When they met with her sister Courtney for an early dinner, he ordered french fries, crispy rice, pretzel bread, and even a four layer cake in front of her. Jonathan knows that I am trying to eat so healthy, and if he's not on my same page I'm not going to be able to hang out with him anymore, Kim insisted. If I break this amazing regimen that I've been on, I'm gonna be AF asterisk asterisk kid. She later told him, I have to legit stop being friends with you because I can't have the temptation, I really can't. We're officially breaking up until I've gotten my rock hard body and I can at least integrate normal food, Kim told him. She then insisted of her new regimen, it's going to take a lot of work but this is gonna work. Kim also had a heart-to-heart -heart with Scott with the family growing increasingly shocked at his behavior with numerous women seemingly in a bid to get back at Courtney for dating 24-year-old male model Yanis Benjima. After she insisted that his behavior was a big soap opera, Scott admitted to being driven by jealousy, telling Kim of his ex she was on vacation with one man the whole trip. That looks like a happier scenario than me jumping around trying to find happiness in these girls who are not fulfilling that. I'm just not happy with anybody.
He also admitted to being insecure that he would be cut off from the family, saying, What if there is a new Scott and everyone thinks we don't really need to be close to him anymore? It's a scary thing for me. Chloe had earlier insisted Scott was calculated in making sure he was photographed with girls, saying, Scott saw Courtney with a guy friend, so you wanna one-up her. Perfect. He's so predictable, it's so slimy and gross, and ick. And when Kim told Courtney she was planning to see him, she told her sister, you should say, and if you want another good hot for some photos, I know this girl. Courtney also insisted to Chloe that she was moving on, telling her, Scott has been calling me he does his thing, I'm his therapist, he feels disgusting, like, whatever. The energy that I put into him I just need to put into my kids. I need to distance myself and just say, you know what, you as a 34 year old father of three, you've got to know what to do at this point. Chloe said later to camera, for Scott, any attention is good attention. So the fact that Courtney is now starting to put up those boundaries and not buy into it every time he cries wolf, that's a huge turning point for her and I'm really proud of her. I see a lot of growth in her. But there was an awkward exchange when Scott came to visit his children with Courtney and told Malika Hook that he would happily have a fourth child with Courtney even after all they had been through. Whatever she wants, but probably just do it, like, artificially. Just so it's not, like, weird, he insisted, as Courtney failed to hide the disdain from her face. When Courtney was reminded that she wanted to have more kids, Scott even tried to press her by saying, she brings up a very good point. But he has a disrespectful nature these days, Courtney shot back, telling Scott to yourself, to me, to your children when he challenged her, with him amazingly asking, what have I done, to you? Courtney, who had one of their children in her lap at the time, refused to bite, instead telling him, I've got all my notes written down at home, for all my venting sessions. And when she was once again asked about the idea of having another child with Scott, this time when he was out of earshot, she insisted, I think, in that case I'd just rather not have another one. I definitely feel that Courtney's got a lot of built-up anger towards me, Scott admitted to camera later. But at the end of the day we have three kids together and that's not gonna change. The biggest focus now is learning how to really legitimately move on and figure out doing a lot more with my kids without Courtney. It's kind of nice in some senses that there's no more false hope. It's just another transition in a very weird part of being together and not being together. Courtney, meanwhile, had insisted in the scenes shot several months ago that she did not have a boyfriend but seemed smitten when talking about meeting Yannis in Paris, saying Kin's assistant had first pointed him out to her. He was friends with our friends, she said. He would walk in, shake hands with our security or whatever, but not say hi to us. And then I was like, why do you hate us? Laughing, she admitted, I was drunk. She continued, once I said that he literally grabbed my hand and was like, it's five in the morning, we're leaving. The next night Yannis was like, bring your ass here. When Chloe asked if she likes it when he's aggressive, Courtney admitted, yeah. And then when we walked into that club when we got the phone call about Kim and so the party was over, she said, of her sister's terrifying aunt robbery with Yannis staying on to help them translate. When Chloe asked if they planned to see each other again, or be more casual, Courtney laughed, See you when I see you, bitch. Chloe, meanwhile, flipped into a panic when her family agreed to travel to Cleveland to support Tristan at his latest Cleveland Cavaliers game fearing a backlash from fans. It started when she invited brother Rob who told her bluntly, I am not gonna let nobody say I'm the reason why they lost. Sorry. Rob has a point I never even thought how people are going to react to my family, Chloe admitted. I just don't want my family to be at any negative aspect when it comes to Tristan's career. 
Her fears seemed to be realized when someone yelled, F asterisk asterisk the conditions at them in the street, with Clo nervously saying, oh perfect before admitting, it's so, scary people are yelling at us. Sports fans are diehard fans, she said later, to camera. And people are emotional and they want their teams to win. I totally get that, but I have nothing to do with it. They had dinner with Tristan's family and Chris Jenner called a family meeting to get Tristan to be completely honest as to whether he wanted them at the game or not. You guys should be there. Yeah, he said calmly, with Chloe saying later, I'm so happy that Tristan wants everybody front and center supporting him. It matters to him and I love that, that he knows none of this bulls asterisk asterisk is real. But sometimes I even need the reminder. They were shown at the game against the Golden State Warriors with Chloe recalling, This is sincerely the best game I've ever been to in my life. So fun. Tristan's family, our family, all cheering. And they won. She said later, after all my stressing this trip could not have gone better. People are always gonna say what they wanna say, and I can't let them interfere with my memories and my quality time with my family. Chris was seen firing off loads of questions at Tristan, but could not hide her love of their matchup, especially after the basketball star said he was planning a surprise party for Chloe's birthday. For me, I just feel like Chloe's met her perfect match, the proud mom beamed.